All right. Good afternoon, Trinidad and Tobago. I know a lot of you have been wondering, well, what is going on? Why are you not seeing me? Why are you not hearing me? Well, because I was getting an interview lined up for all of you. All right. Um, it's a pastor friend of mine. It's very good pastor, sister, and the lad. <laughs> <laughs> who is in Grenada and we heard about what happened the storm um, that, that, that would have passed Trinidad and Tobago and went to Grenada um, well parts of it passed through Grenada I don't think the whole um, storm would have affected Grenada but I have her on the on, on live on on uh, how you put it on WhatsApp video call all right, I have a live on WhatsApp video call, and I'm going to put her on for her to tell you all what it is, um, how, tell, tell us what went on. So I'll let, let her introduce herself. Pastor Mitchell is going to introduce herself, and she'll tell you what part of Grenada she's from, and, um, you know, give us an idea of what went on in Grenada. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good and afternoon, Trinidad and Tobago. And how are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> long time no see. Long it's, time. It's pretty long time, long yeah. time. Yeah. Surprisingly, it's pretty hot here today. I mean, the weather's a little overcast, but it's really kind of hot. You okay, know? okay, okay. Yeah. Beautiful. So tell us, you all, what, what, what happened in the midst of all of this that took place? Well, um, in the midst of all of this, so we had... Um, been, we were put on storm storm watch, right. um, I believe. Um, but God really does move mountains, and He moves clouds as well. Right. <laughs> so, um, in the midst of all that, we basically just experienced uh, heavy rain in some parts of Grenada. I'm from Saint Andrews, right. um, the big parish. Okay. So on my side, it was pretty much rainy at some point um, on 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 Tuesday. Am I correct? It was Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. So on Tuesday, it was pretty much raining, rainy. Uh, the weather was, you know, not as beautiful as it is today. Okay. Um, we had high wind at some point. It was more to the evening, coming out at nightfall, that we started experiencing some thunder, lightning. Right. Um, I did not necessarily hear about any flooding. Um, on Tuesday, I, I believe on yesterday, though, we had a lot of rain at some point in St. George's. I believe some parts of Grand Dance was flooded. Um, even St. Andrews, we had a lot of rain up here as well. Um, that was for yesterday. It's, it was almost like the, the storm passed yesterday at our time. Okay. Um, yeah, so it was pretty much like that. Um, we had a little block out for a little while on um, the night of the storm, not too long. Okay. We had a little fall outage. Yes. Um, that, was, that was about it. We, I, I guess maybe some parts of the other parishes may have may have had a little flooding fallen trees but there really wasn't anything you know drastic or yeah. uh that we couldn't handle and we really do give god thanks and praise for that because it could have been worse you know yeah. we've, we've seen over on your side that you know there was a lot of flooding you know so we are thankful to god that y'all are safe yeah. and that it was not as serious as you know in grenada here right 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 um I know that you all had elections just recently. When was we when did. was it? When when did you all have elections? That was, uh, it was a it was a, a week today. Today makes it a week. So it was last Thursday. Last Thursday, yes. right? You all had last Thursday. We now have a new party in power. Mm -hmm. um, so we're we're going through the transition. Transition of you know, that. Stage. Beautiful, beautiful. Stage. And um, it's a young man. He's forty four years old. Pretty young. He doesn't even look like forty. He doesn't even look like that. No, he looks he like a, a teenager, <laughs> you know. But the looks can be deceiving, and so we are continuing to trust God that you know um, He is now in the position where He can make a difference, and we we hope that He will not just look to men, but He would look to God in this time to bring the country and you know into a better place. And saying that on the heels of you saying that, I want you to tell me. What happened in Grenada? Um, you, you you were sharing with me off air, but I want you to tell Trinidad and Tobago what took place in Grenada after he won the elections. Uh, so after he, he would have won the election on Thursday evening, 
uh, it was a holiday on Friday. Right. <laughs> um, and then we had a National Day of Prayer on Sunday and Sunday. Right. That day week. And I, I'm really, you know, proud as to how we would have started off, you know, uh, putting God first, you know. I believe God is glorified in it, whether it's for a show, whether it's for a reel. You know, it, people would have all different things to say. But at the end of the day, I'm really happy that this is the platform. This is the foundation that is being set, you know, mm -hmm. and not just for the government or for, uh, you know, the person in power. No, but in anything that you're about to start, anything that you're about to build, God must be the foundation. And that's just the way that, you know, we have to look at things. Right. So he would have held a national day of prayer on two days, the Saturday and the Sunday. Right. Now, in my mind, people, yeah, I'm, I'm now going people. to say that. I'm now <laughs> going to say that. Sorry. So he, he didn't leave anybody out. That, that, yeah. is that is it. Right. That is it. That is it. That is it. And that was commendable. Yeah. That is commendable. Because he, cause he knows Very that on, on, the, on the island, it have two major religions and two major spiritual groups, That's which is the Adventist yes. and the, the, the full gospel. So he would have catered for the That's two. And that was good. That was good. And even as you and said, even if it's for a show, that shows that even if it's for a show, he understands it. He understands the dynamics of the, the, the two. That's it. That comes with that. That's yeah. it. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so we're really just good. looking forward, you know, and, and going forward. We're looking forward to the rain season. And I know that, you know, it, it, it's already said it's going to be pretty active, you know, and we really hope that, you know, God will continue to have his hand upon Grenada, Caracu, Pitsmatnik, Trinidad, Tobago, and the entire region. Yes, you know? yes, yes, yes. yes going yes. forward, nobody experiences any major disaster. Right. So you didn't have any you major disasters. You didn't have any major disasters in Grenada. Nobody, ho nobody homes, like, roofs were blown off or nothing like that. I... I did hear about some flooding, some downstairs in some mm -hmm. parts again, um, that that did experience experience some flooding um, on this last storm here. So again, you know, uh, we just have to continue to trust God because yeah. we don't know, you know, what will happen at any point. You know, um, Nadma doesn't always have it right. Uh, and things can change in the, in the twink of an eye. You know, you can lose stuff. Uh, and all these, I, I, I want to remember uh, preaching a message, why storm calm? And, you know, it's so important that even though it's, it might be a natural thing now, that we still have to remember the spiritual aspect of the storm that we may face, even in our lives, because a storm might come, you might flood you downstairs, you'll be upset, you're mad, you, you know, you act up. But it can also be an open door where God can bless you, where new things can come, you know. Yes. Somebody can. All the stuff that you may have had that you thought was rough, you might, you might have cherished it, but bam, God opened a door, somebody come, they bless you, they make new ways, you know. And so we always have to remember, even as we go through this natural rain season, storm season, hurricane season, to not just look at the, the, the natural aspect, but also look at the spiritual aspect. You know, God brings storms in our lives for different reasons. So even today, yes, we're talking about the weather, but you might be experiencing some storms in your life. Be mindful that God may just be opening a new way, clearing some trees down, opening a new path, creating some, you know, doing something that you've never seen, you know, because there might have been so many trees up that you didn't see the fish on it. Sometimes God will cause storms to come for many different reasons. And yeah. we just have to continue to trust God and move on to the hand of God. All right, thank you very much for being with me. I know this was short. Welcome. I know this was short notice, but you're always prepared. That's that's okay. That's fine. It's always nice to to you know touch base. I really miss you. That I really miss you guys. So you're not coming down you for know? next week. You coming down for next week? <laughs> not. Uh, maybe next. Hopefully next week. All the right. plan is next year. All right. Okay. So we're working. We're working on that. All right, then. Well, I'll see you soon. So, thank you. You're most thank welcome. Thank you so much. Lord bless you. Thank bless you. Bless you. All right. God bless you. Bye.
is the more we invite in misery. Mm -hmm. There's no better way in this world for peace and total rest. Tried and tested, Christ is the best. No philosophy, no creed could ever supersede what the Holy Bible, wonderful oracle, showing the people. Oh yeah, and two shall be in the field, one shall be taken. Oh yeah, two shall be at the wheel, only one will fly. Aye, aye. Every stone shall be upturned and false doctrine shaken. While God's truth and his people are lifted high, yeah. The Father never needed religion or systems of it. His word stands on its own and proves its worth. Yesterday, today, forever. God's promises changes never. And true government is when God leads the leader. Lead them on, yeah. True government is when God all right, so I'm back with you, Trinidad Tobago. I want to thank my friend from Grenada for coming on and sharing with you what um, is going on in Grenada, what went on in Grenada. Because, you know, there are some people out there, there are some people out there who are saying that this whole storm or, um, yeah, this whole storm thing was a joke. It wasn't real. It was just for ratings. It was a distraction. It was to take people off of the, the failures of the government and to try to put the pay off the, 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 the um, international media and the this and the that and that. all that nonsense you hear. And Grenada, I, I did it to allow people to hear that people in Grenada was facing a storm. So, I just had to do that because sometimes you have to clear up the the the, 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 the the misconceptions and the fake news that is out there, boy. Oh, man. Sometimes you just really wonder, you know. Like some people just have nothing to do. You know what I mean? Nothing, nothing to do. So I want you to share the live. Today I promised you that I, was, I would deal with the um, airport and the the airport bacchanal that's going on and all that's happening in Trinidad and Tobago that is that, that, that the talk of the tongue right now you hear any talk in the to of the tongue and what's going on so I said today I would draw your memory take you back to what um, would have happened back then to what's happening now and where are we going from here where are we going from here Trinidad and Tobago, where are we going from here? What are we on? What are we allowing to take? Where, how, how are we going? Where are we going? And that's what we want to talk about today. Where are we going from here? You know. So if you haven't yet joined me on the live, I think there's a good time for you to do so. To join me on the live, the Street Now on FM Facebook page. Also, you can join me on. Um, YouTube. I'm also on YouTube, so you could also join me on YouTube, Iowa TV. Right? Check the first two presidents of the United States of America. They were orthodox, practicing Christians, because the mysteries of God's plan. A nonsense to carnal man, the master say walk by faith, never to extrapolate, cause he's too great, I know he's too great, and I say two shall be in the field, one shall be chosen, yeah, yeah, two shall be at the wheel, only one will fly, aye, aye, aye. man, every stone shall be upturned and false government shaped and to the root, while God's truth and his people are Yesterday, today, forever God's statutes changes, never 
messengers of God's salvation who ruled over the earth's political fate. Oh yeah, but no thanks to the emergence of secular humanism. They separating the church from the state. Asking David, Joshua, Samuel, Solomon, all these great folks, the new government without God is guesswork. All right, so it all started with this guy here. The Prime Minister, Mr. Basio Pandey, UNC, when they were embarked on building a brand new airport, spanking new airport for Trinidad and Tobago. That time I was a little boy, yeah, young man growing up, and uh, I would have heard about the airport from Dr. the Honorable Keith Christopher Rowley, yes. When the PNM was on the hostings, the political hostings, I remember one day my mother took me to a political meeting at Skiffle Bunch Panyard. When Dr. Rowley, they would call him the Rottweiler, would have taken the platform. It was so, it is so edged in my mind. How he would have read out the cost of one door. One door in that airport. And uh, the I remember Mr. Manning, Dr. Rowley, and the educating the population. And that time, as I said to you, I was a young man living in San Fernando. Still living in San Fernando. I ain't going nowhere. Right? Yeah. Young man living in San Fernando and going to hear Dr. Rowley do a presentation on what was happening with that airport scandal. But I said all of that to say this. I would have shown you this clip already, but I want to start off the, 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 the whole discussion with this video of Mr. Basdio Pandey. I'm giving you a piece of the video of Mr. Basdio Pandey opening. Yes, he was opening the airport. Piaco International Airport. Look at the faces. Listen. Look as we start the conversation on how we reach here with this airport bacchanal. Look at this train and Tobago. Mr. Basdio Pandi. Right? Take him in. Because it was the right thing to do for this country. I back the decision to proceed with this project because it was and is so obviously in the national interest. I supported the decision to proceed with the construction of this airport because it is so obvious, obviously so obviously it suits our nation's purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, at the start of my remarks, I made reference to the unending old talk that this airport has been generating for such a long time. One even had the impression that this airport is to be given sole credit for the establishment of the local branch of Transparency International. After all the talk, from people who are yet to see the inside of this facility, it is time to let this design masterpiece speak for itself. My purpose today is to receive the Millennium Airport from the contractors. And let me take this opportunity to congratulate the contractors on a magnificent job. I am told that the cost per square foot of this airport is lower than any other airport in the world. I accept this facility on behalf of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. At the same time, I hand over this Millennium Airport to the citizens of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago in whose name and on whose behalf this facility was constructed. Let history record that on this 25th day of November, in the year of our Lord 2000, 
the spirit of our nation soared to new heights on behalf of and in the interest of the citizens of our republic. As Prime Minister, I vested the operations of the Millennium Airport in the Airports Authority of Trinidad and Tobago. This I now do. Ladies and gentlemen. So you see in the airport, features of the airport in its finish and in, in, in its starting stage and its finished stage. And Mr. Basdio Pandi would have opened that airport. The old silver fox, as some people will call him. But while going through the stages of this case, for me as a young man, I recognize certain things, but you saw familiar faces. You saw Isha and Steve. Hmm? You saw where they were part of the opening of the airport. Right? They were right there. I saw a familiar face, Mr. Sadiq Bosch. He was the Minister of Works and Transport back then. And the whole airport situation and what went on in the airport. The so, I said to myself, okay, I'm doing my research and I'm pulling together my clips and we all know what happened. If you can remember, I, could, I will remind you as much as I can. So there were, as I said before, um, questions about the airport. Questions about, you know, why things were done a certain way, the contractors. Questions upon questions upon questions about the airport. And Mr. Pandey, Mr. Pandey would have lost the elections and uh, Ms. Dr. Rowley would have, I mean, Mr. Money would have come in and uh, we would have had the airport investigations. You remember this song? This song by Mr. Sugar Allows. Listen to it a little bit. Telling me how the UNC in jeopardy. He say, I lost my boy, I want a remedy quick. Because my minister of finance, he take him sick. I don't know what went wrong, but like he get this squeeze. The other day in parliament, he began to sneeze. And the only time he gets the allergy is whenever in Bhutan Valley questioning he who own Royal Castle Fried Chicken. The travel agency Aladdin Who got the job in the savannah They say around Christmas Don't buy beef Don't buy goat Don't buy sheep Because vampire bat biting these animals And it have a thing they call rabies so, Excuse me, sorry Pour them, right? Yes Chorus is hish. Gotta get his sneeze with that one. Hish. I dream I get a phone call from Pande recently. Telling me that the UNC in jeopardy. He say I lost my boy, I want a remedy quick. Because my minister of finance, he take him sick. I don't know what went wrong, but like he get this squeeze. The other day in parliament, he began to sneeze. And the only time he gets the allergy is whenever in Bhutan Valley questioning he who own Royal Castle Fried Chicken. Yes. The travel agency Aladdin. Yes. Who had the job in the savannah. Yes. Who is not a contractor. Yes. He say, I lose by the thing is so frustrating. I don't believe his squeal, Mr. Quite on squealing. But somehow I feel he trying to tell the nation the whole of the UNC involving corruption. Yes. Ah, 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 ah. 
Cris. And Ish Galbaran Singh and Steve Ferguson were not in court on Wednesday when their attorney fired Hussein applied for bail. The two businessmen were arrested on Tuesday and taken to the maximum security prison in Golden Grove. But sitting in the San Fernando High Court, Justice Vasish Kokoran denied the bail application. But the judge said the state, represented by attorney Calvin Ramkisun and Michael Kwamina, agreed that the court could exercise its discretion to grant bail in the matter, but he wanted to adopt a cautious approach. He said the court had to hold the scale of justice evenly between the claimants and the state. Justice Kokram said he took into consideration, among other things, the seriousness of the offence, the severity of the penalty for such an offence, and the public interest in the matter. State Attorney Ram Kisun argued that because of the advanced stage of the proceedings, the businessman might become a flight risk. But their attorney, Fahad Hussein, argued that his clients were entitled to bail, were not a flight risk, and had complied to the conditions of the previous bail. While denying bail, Justice Kokram granted Hossein's request for a conservatory order, preventing the man's extradition to the United States pending the outcome of the motion. The judge said the matter would be dealt with swiftly. The motion hearing was initially set for July 22nd, but he brought it up to next Thursday, June 24th. Justice Kokram said it would be wrong to extradite the man while the constitutional motion was still pending. In the motion, they are contending that the proceedings are unjust and oppressive and infringes on their constitutional rights. Hossein, who was instructed by attorney Nairi Alfonso, also questioned who authorized the detention of his clients. He said the decision rests solely with the attorney general and not with the director of public prosecutions. Today's court ruling means that Galbaran Singh and Ferguson would have to remain behind bars at the maximum security prison until the determination of their motion, which is fixed for hearing at the Port of Spain High Court on June 24th. The attorney fired Hossein says he will appeal the judge's refusal to grant bail. The businessmen are facing 95 charges related to the construction of the Biarco International Airport Terminal building. I'm going for a break and come back. When I come back from the break, we're going to continue right here on the Street 919 FM. Don't come off the live. Thanks very much for all of you joining me on the live today. Every Friday, it's all about Firewood Soccer Fridays with MCU Consulate Takochi from 6 straight to 9 p.m. Blazing all the latest and past soccer hits. So remember, make it a line, make it a day, rock and come in, you know. It's all about Firewood Soccer Fridays on the Street 919 FM. Don't know. If you're experiencing pain, constipation, headaches, poor blood circulation, high or low blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, swollen or darkened feet, come visit us at Health and Wealth Lifestyle, located at 73 Eastern Main Road, Barataria, opposite Eastern Credit Union. We at Health and Wealth Lifestyle offer a wide range of services. Come and experience our new 3D analyzer, which allows you to have a look inside your body. We also provide live blood analysis, iridology, ionic foot detox with foot soap and foot massage aqua therapy full body massage and organic supplements on sale such as nano silver nano zinc body light cold press sesame oil and more health and wealth lifestyle located at number 73 eastern main road barataria opposite eastern credit union for more information call 275-8359 or 288-1108 Join Nicole Huggins for Health and Wealth Lifestyle every Monday from 9.05 a.m. to 9.55 a.m. right here on the street, 919 FM. This is Wayne Delamore, head consultant and director of Natural Health Solution. With over 15 years of experience in clinical nutrition and microscopy, we specialize in early detection and prevention. We incorporate evidence-based nutrition and science-driven analysis. Tune in to our educational program every Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Right here on the street, 91.9 FM. For appointments, call 222-2189 or 304-5816. Natural Health Solutions, we offer a natural solution to healthy living. Good, I'm looking like a real bad. 
Oscar. Are you ready for that book experience again? The Sea Champion and the Embassy say, Look with us for that unforgettable boat ride experience. Sea Champion leaving from King's Wharf, San Fernando, and the Embassy leaving from Breakfast Shed, Port of Spain, or Westside Trinidad. For more information, call 399 5959 814723 or email us at TT at gmail.com. Book now and reserve your cruise. This is Bishop Aaron Williams from the Divine Problem Solving International Ministries inviting you to be part of our broadcast on any given Thursday night from 12 midnight right on to 5 a.m. on Friday morning. And this broadcast is called Early Morning Gospel Market Program. Then we have on Tuesday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. the Holy Ghost Gospel Pharmacy. If you are sick and ailing, you can get from this particular pharmacy from the pharmacist the good things of life. Hallelujah. And any Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Break into the host of the Philistines. Hallelujah. If you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, hearing the Babel of false doctrines that you encounter daily, it's about time you get close to God. God's word direct from his throne room in the name of Jesus. God has good plans for his people. Why do you worry so much? Turn your lights down low and listen to the master's radio. Get in touch with God, turn your radio on. You are invited to join Pastors Morris and Agnes Johnson of the Church of the Firstborn Assembly Miracle Center, located at number 399 Eastern Main Road, Guaico, in Sangri Grandi, for the Old Time Gospel Hour Family Radio Ministry every Sunday from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Check out the Children's Hour Worship Ministry of the Word and the Family Forum every Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. The Law and You every Friday evening from 9 a.m. to 5 a.m. All Night Prayer Live on the Street 919 FM designed with you in mind. This program deals with today's issues from a biblical perspective. You will also be given the opportunity Opportunity to call in and interact with us. Micah 6 8 says, He had showeth the O main and what doeth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. Your financial support through the First Citizens Bank will be greatly appreciated. Account number 795222. In the name of the Church of the Firstborn Assembly. For further information, call 75311. Or email us at church668hope at gmail.com. Share the line. Share the line. The Street 919 FM on Facebook and Instagram. Share the line. Iowa George on Instagram. Share the line. Iowa TV and Street Street TV on YouTube. Share the line. The Street 919 FM. Ish. Gotta get his sneeze with that one. Ish. I dream I get a phone call from Panda recently. Telling me that the UNC in jeopardy. He say, I lose my boy, I want a remedy quick. Because my minister of finance, he taking sick. I don't know what went wrong, but like he get this squeeze. The other day in parliament, he began to sneeze. And the only time he gets the allergy is whenever in Burton Valley questioning he who own Royal Castle Fried Chicken. Court of Appeal judges Wendell Kangaloo, Alan Mendonca, and Paula May Weeks will rule on Friday on whether businessmen Ishwa Galbaran Singh and Steve Ferguson will be extradited to the United States to answer fraud charges arising out of the Piaco Airport project. The two businessmen, who are known financiers of the UNC, are challenging the constitutionality of the Extradition Act, as well as a High Court judge's refusal to grant leave to have it reviewed. In early October, Attorney General Anand Ramlogan signed the extradition warrants for the two to be extradited to the United States, 
to face criminal prosecution in relation to the Piaco Airport expansion project. But within hours, the two were challenging the AG's decision. Galbaran Singh and Ferguson are charged with bid rigging, wire fraud, conspiracy to engage in money laundering and money laundering in the construction of the $1.6 billion airport terminal building. Ferguson is wanted on an 82-count indictment, while Galbaran Singh is wanted on a 13-count indictment. The Court of Appeal judges are ruling on a constitutional point before them regarding the constitutionality of the Extradition Act of 1985. They are also expected to determine if the decision by the Attorney General Alan Ram Logan to order their extradition should in fact be examined by a High Court judge. For CNC 3, I'm Melissa Williams. And with that the man going back sneezing again, 600 acres in Matura, yes. and 52 million for Windsor. Yes. Who owned the Maritime Casino? Yes. Who had the contract for Piaco? Yes. I see quite young, make a drift like he want to fall. Still in Burton Valley, when he is the pressure at all. He block his nose with a kerchief, but to no avail. I swear the whole of the UNC going in jail. Yes. Yes. All you get. In the dream, I say, Mr. Pande, listen, sir. Why don't you take Mr. Kwaitong to a bush doctor? Domain is medicines outdated and very old. I'm sure that he could give him something good for the cold. Or you could try his ever pick and hose him away. Chandelier Christmas bush or shadow bed. Seeing some of those comments, I think they are not justified. Uh, they're unjustified comments. Um, the situations are very different and they're very similar. The process is the same. Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bissasa making it clear that while both cases involved extradition to the United States, they have their differences. Highlighting the similarities first, this is what the Prime Minister said. In both cases, the extradition request was um, signed by the Attorney General and then the matter went to court. Thus far, it, this has proceeded along the same, um, same uh, uh, position. However, she went on to outline some of the differences in both cases, which makes a full comparison not applicable. That in that matter, the government, the state attorneys had objected to bail, and those persons spent, I don't know, months, they spent months in jail before the matters were finally determined um, in the courts. So in this case, the, the government did not object to, uh, to, to, um, to bail, and indeed bail was granted. Mrs. Pesar Bissasa went on to explain another major difference, which is the fact that the matter involving Galbar and and Ferguson had local proceedings before the court. There were local proceedings here in our courts in Trinidad, the criminal courts of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, they, when they did the application before the court, the High Court, they applied for leave to apply for judicial review, and the High Court judge refused the leave for judicial review and it went to the Court of Appeal and the Court of Appeal overturned the High Court judge and said yes you are granted leave to pursue uh, an application for judicial review that went before the courts and I'm the Prime Minister was speaking with the media on Thursday at the opening of the new Maloney police station Rishi Harinanan seniors because my Minister of Finance he taking sick I don't know what went wrong but like he get the squeeze the other day in parliament he began to sneeze and the only time he gets the allergy is whenever in Bolton Valley questioning he who own Royal Castle Fried Chicken yes. the travel agency Aladdin yes. who had the job in the savannah yes. who is not a contractor yes. he say hello spidey thing is so frustrating I don't believe his squeal, Mr. Kwaitong squealing, but somehow I feel he trying to tell ago, the... MP Herbert Bonney has openly shared his side of the story with the public, saying that he tendered his resignation before the public announcement that he had been fired. But on social media site Facebook this morning, a further statement was posted in the name of MP Herbert Volney. It reads, 
I want to thank the hundreds of people from all walks of life for your support, for me and my family. We are people of faith and we are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. We need now to pray to God for strength for our Prime Minister, who is now overcome by Anand Ramdogan, that she may purge herself of the influence of one who is unelected by the people, but influences her in a way that we the people must fear. Later in the evening, yet another update was posted. It reads, To the hundreds of people who have lent their support to my family and me, the truth has been told. Please lend our Prime Minister your heart so that she will have the strength and vision to see what is wrong and deal with it. Pray for her. I am already covered and spared by my dismissal. When CNC3 contacted Mr. Volney today for confirmation that he had personally updated his profile, he refused to comment. We also placed a call to Attorney General Alan Ram Logan, who said that he was unavailable to comment because he was busy with a personal matter. For CNC3 News... Olha a gay. Yes. Yes. In the dream, I say, Mr. Pandele, sir. Why don't you take Mr. Kwaitong to a bush doctor? Domain is medicines outdated and very old. I'm sure that he could give him something good for the cold. Or you could try his ever pick and Jose Maui. Shandile Christmas for sure, Shadow Benny. And they say I lose this thing in no accident. I feel this man in throw black pepper in parliament to build the fair report in Toko. Yes. Who was the last shaman at it? Co? Yes. About it. So, you all, I hope that you all are looking. I hope that you all are listening. I hope you all are taking notes. I hope you all are taking proper notes so that when I come back in, you all are going to be talking to me based on the clips that I showed you all so far. Right? So, I showed you all a clip. Let me just give you all a, a quick rundown of the clips that I showed so far. Right, so the first clip I showed you all was with Mr. Basdio Pande opening the airport, be, making sarcastic remarks about the airport opening and stuff like that. Then I played you clips on Mr. E, Ishan Steve appearing in court, what is being said by the judges and all of that. And we, 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 we reached down to um, why they don't want to extradite them, why they can't fight the case in Trinidad and not have to go to America, and you heard all of that. And then we heard now about Section 34. You heard what Mr. Volney had to say? Huh? All of this controversy going on. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. So join me on the live. Join me on the live. I'm giving you, I'm taking you back. Because some of you just forget real bad. So it's my duty to find all these things and show you. Is then I tell the speaker quite tongue is not sneezing. What he's trying to say is he swagal barans. Yes. was an admission that caught many by surprise. Former Justice Minister Herbert Volney, during a news conference held at the office of the Attorney General earlier today, admitted that he was responsible for the controversial proclamation of Section 34. Mr. Volney... What? Wait, 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 wait. He was responsible for Section 34? But earlier, didn't I just play you all a oh, clip? Yeah. When Mr. Volney say, what did Mr. Volney say in the clip I just played you all? Listen to it again. I had to play it again because you see some of you Justice all... This was revoked two days ago. MP Herbert Volney has openly shared his side of the story with... Wait, listen. I want you all to hear. Because some of you all just say that you didn't hear. Justice was... Some of you all just say that I make up these things. Some of you all might want to tell them to sue me. Or some of you all might want to write that. But I ain't saying it. Hear who's saying it. 
Justice was revoked two days ago. MP Herbert Volney has openly shared his side of the story with the public, saying that he tendered his resignation before the public announcement that he had been fired. But on social media site Facebook this morning, a further statement was posted in the name of MP Herbert Volney. It reads, I want to thank the hundreds of people from all walks of life for your support, for me and my family. We are people of faith and we are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. We need now to pray to God for strength for our Prime Minister, who is now overcome by Anand Ramlogan, that she may purge herself of the influence of one who is unelected by the people, but influences her in a way that we the people must fail. Later in the evening, yet another update was posted. It reads, To the hundreds of people who have lent their support to my family and me, the truth has been told. Please lend our Prime Minister your heart, so that she will have the strength and vision to see what is wrong and deal with it. Pray for her. I am already covered and spared by my dismissal. When CNC3 contacted Mr. Volney today for confirmation that he had personally updated his profile, he refused to comment. We also placed a call to Attorney General Anand Ram Logan, who said that he was unavailable to comment because he was busy with a personal matter. For CNC3 News... So... You just heard it. You just heard that, right? But wait, just now, just now, will you wait now? Wait now. We're going back. We're going back here now. Let, let's listen to this, right? Join me on the live, you know. You all are the, the jury, so you tell me. It was an admission that caught many by surprise. Former Justice Minister Herbert Volney, during a news conference held at the office of the Attorney General earlier today, admitted that he was responsible for the controversial proclamation of Section 34. Mr. Volney, a former St. Joseph MP, apologized to Attorney General Anna Ram Logan for the defamatory statements he'd made against him. CNews' Shirley Lewis attended the news conference and brought back this report that I take full responsibility for Section 34. I was the line minister at the Ministry of Justice and uh, having come from a background in the criminal justice system as a judge and as a former prosecutor, I was the one who, who not only uh, helped to calibrate section 34 and to bring it about but also to to have it amended in the senate two years after the controversial proclamation of section 34 of the administration of justice indictable proceedings act 2012 an apology has come from the former justice minister herbert volney weeks after its proclamation on august 31st 2012 section 34 was repealed by the government after public concern was raised that businessman ishwar galbaranzi and steve ferguson stood to benefit the two men had been facing corruption charges relating to the construction of the piaco international airport amounting to hundreds of billions of dollars it was felt the proclamation of section 34 would have paved the way for the charges to be dropped on the basis that the matter was over 10 years old However, Mr. Volney, a retired judge, said today he accepts full responsibility for the proclamation of Section 34. He added that his accusations against Adrian Logan was reckless, but he was hurting because of the manner in which he was fired as a government minister. The Attorney General had nothing, I repeat, nothing to do with Section 34 other than as a parliamentary colleague to assist me on the floor during the committee stage of the Senate in particular. Adrian Logan said he was pleased that they were able to settle the matter and that Mr. Volney can publicly retract the defamatory statements made against him. At the time, Mr. Volney had said he was being made the fall guy and claimed his dismissal was being engineered by Mr. M. Logan in order to take the heat off the public call for the AG to be fired. Mr. Volney contacted the lawyers who are representing my good self and they were able to arrive at a consensual position whereby Mr. Volney would apologize, withdraw those defamatory remarks um, and also pay an undisclosed sum to a charity of my choice. And he also agrees to give an undertaking 
that no such further defamatory remarks will be made um, against my office as Attorney General or myself personally. Mr. Volney, who was sacked in September 2012 as Minister of Justice and the Prime Minister, was justified in actions to fire him from a cabinet. Uh, I should have undertaken more careful consideration of the proclamation, which I did not. And I failed the cabinet in that regard. And I can well understand why the Prime Minister acted as she did. The Attorney General had filed a lawsuit against Mr. Volney last year, claiming defamation of character. Charlene Lewis, Senior. Joining us from South Key in downtown. I dream I get a phone call from Pande recently, telling me that the UNC in jeopardy. He say, I lose my boy, I want a remedy quick, because my Minister of Finance, he taking sick. I don't know what went wrong, but like he get this squeeze the other day. Well, yeah, these people asking, <laughs> these people asking you all to vote for them again, you know. These people asking all to support them, you know. Somebody say, talk about falling on your own sword? Hmm. Boy, I don't know. Something wrong with us, you know. These people asking for us to support them again, you know. So you all see where it starts with Mr. Pandey coming down the road, you know. So wait, look at this. I only think I do research and joke. Just hours after the Senate followed the lower house in passing legislation to repeal the controversial Section 34 of the Administration of Justice and Indictable Offenses Act, President George Maxwell Richards signed the official document to make it law. The confirmation came from Attorney General Anand Ram Logan in a telephone interview with CNC3, telling us that in this case no proclamation was necessary. He confirmed that the state wasted no time in having the legislation sent to the president following last night's passage for his signature this morning. But the matter, however, was before the magistrate's court again this morning. Businessmen Ishwagal Singh and Steve Ferguson now being told they must wait until October 2nd to have their submissions heard. The two men appeared in the Port of Spain Magistrate's second court before Magistrate Ijeni Espede and their attorneys led by Queen's Counsel Andrew Mitchell told the court they will be making a submission on the basis of Clause 34. Hmm. He was not commenting on the decision of the parliament as he left the court. Afraid no comment, no comment, cannot discuss pending proceedings. The state, led by Director of Public Prosecutions, Roger Gaspard, indicated to the court that they would need time to present their case. DPP Gaspard also not speaking about parliament's decision. I don't want to comment on that at this stage. No, nothing. Carl Branting, too, was not commenting when asked by CNC3 what he thought about the developments in the parliament, Magistrate Espinay said the next hearing for October 2nd when oral submissions will be made, giving the two sides time to present written submissions in the interim. Yes. In the dream I say, Mr. Pande, listen, sir. Why don't you take Mr. Kwaitong to a bush doctor? Domain is medicines outdated and very old. I'm sure that he could give him something good for the cold. Or you could try his ever pick and hose him a week. Chandelier Christmas for sure, Shadow Benny. And they say I lose this thing in no accident. I feel this man in throw black pepper in parliament to build the ferry. Join me on the live, share the live. I'm taking you back history here in Trinidad and Tobago. You remember this? How many of you remember this? Thank you very much, Chief Secretary London. Somebody must go! Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to you again, of my people of Trinidad and Tobago. When this matter came to the public attention, and we sought to respond. Yes. Among the things I did as opposition leader, acting on your behalf, in the face of this shame and this stain on our country, where those who have enough money and enough influence could get a prime minister and a cabinet 
to come to the parliament and under the guise of passing a particular law, insert certain things, give certain assurance to the parliament to get the support of opposition members and independent senators. And having got that support, you are giving an assurance that you will not do certain things and that you must do certain things and you come out of the parliament and in the dead of night in the middle of our 50th anniversary of independence good god a few days before the 100th anniversary ends of eric williams birth in the day. so i immediately i immediately Understanding that this is the communication aid in a matter of seconds around the world, from Australia to Timbuktu, from New Zealand to Scotland, the people know that in Trinidad and Tobago there exists a government that betrayed the parliament, that used the cabinet to allow alleged criminals, innocent or guilty, to not have a day in court. Oh, what a country. So I wrote to all the interested parties where Trinidad and Tobago's interest is affected. I wrote to the government of the United States, our major trading partner and our major partner in defense of this country. I wrote to the United Kingdom, another partner in defense of this country. I wrote to the government of Canada, another partner. I wrote to the government of France, who by having French territories in the region is a partner in our security. I wrote to the government of the Kingdom of Holland, that has territories in this region and whose warships secure our state. And I wrote to the United Nations, where our proud legacy is in danger. I wrote to the OS, of we are early member. I wrote to the ACS. And I wrote to the CARICOM where we are brothers and sisters alive to tell them one thing and one thing only. And that is that the office holders, the prime minister, the cabal, the cabinet, they speak only for themselves in this criminal matter. And that my letters separate the people of Trinidad and Tobago from this criminal act of the government of Trinidad and Tobago. I write them to let them know that even though the government has done that to the people, the people will have none of it, and today you have shown that by your thousand. It was Winston Churchill who said in Britain's darkest day in World War II, this is not the beginning of the end. It is the end of the beginning of our action, but it is the beginning of the end of the Kamala Prasad regime. When former President Robinson spoke about morality and absence of moral and spiritual values, some persons are highly offended. But power being exercised without moral and spiritual values is tyranny. And you've seen it here. That is why, that is why, after an emergency session in Parliament, in the lower house and in the upper house, and the debate was concluded in both houses, not a member of the cabinet, even today, could say, why did you do that? It is not that they don't know the answer. It is not that they don't have the answer. But the answer is too horrible to tell you. And your presence here today, in 48 hours, there were thousands of persons saying to this government, we will have none of it. We will have none of it. On this platform today are persons of different political views. They may have different religious persuasions. But I'll tell you one thing that binds us together, especially in this hour of crisis. We are standing up for Trinidad and Tobago. And if Trinidad and Tobago... If Trinidad and Tobago ever needed us, all of us, it is now. There is more that binds me to Brother Abdullah and to Brother Kev Negu than separate me. Because the red, white, and black bind us together. That is what we defend me. A very curious thing happened today. 
I pointed out to the country that we had an emergency session of parliament in the face of this outrage. Yes. And the head of the government, the head of the cabinet that authorized it, came to the parliament in that debate and didn't have a word to say. All she did was to try to get Anna Roberts to speak for her. And to get Jack Warner to speak for her. But Anna Roberts, God help us, is not the Prime Minister. No, is Anna Logan. No, is Jack Warner. The Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, we know her name. She has authority. I want to ask you, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, if a crisis like this had arisen in New Zealand, in India, in Australia, in Canada, you think the Prime Minister could have gone to the Parliament and have not a word to say? Have you ever seen the British Prime Minister at question time at Westminster? And then we are governed by a coalition party. So the leader of the coalition has nothing to say. And the second tier leader of the COP, he too had nothing to say. But while they have nothing to say, the millions, the millions and the spin doctors are calling for my resignation. I want to tell them something. The record will show in this country that I am not about office. I can walk away from office if I have to. But when my country needs me and I have nothing to apologize for, I will be here. And let me say something to all those who think that I am the problem. You know, the problem is not a cabinet that deceived the parliament. The problem is not a prime minister who used a cabinet to cause persons not to appear in court. Yeah. The problem is not an attorney general whose record is as long and as grey as you could think. The problem is that the opposition voted for it. And therefore we are to blame equally. Yeah. Let's start with this. We voted for it on one ground and one ground only. Yeah. That the assurances given to parliament would be met. And if you have to apologize for one thing, we'll do it now. Apologize for taking them at the lying word in the parliament. Yeah. Could you imagine, could you imagine an editorial in the Guardian is saying that I should be chastised because I should have known I shouldn't trust the government. What the hell is this? The editorial in the Guardian is saying that the opposition leader should know that the government is not trustworthy and don't trust them. Well, I agree that they're not trustworthy. But having now accepted in trying to defend themselves from this fiasco, having accepted that they cannot be trusted, they must get out of office at the earliest opportunity. COP sat there and had nothing to say. Nothing. We pointed out that notwithstanding what the parliament does, when we found out what they did, we came to the parliament to try to fix it. One of the things we said from early is that notwithstanding whatever option the parliament uses, it will be challenged in the court because you gave them that right and to attempt to take it away, they can now go and argue in the court that the parliament is acting improperly. Boy, the Attorney General went out of his way to put words on Hansard that can be used by defense lawyers to say, you see what the government did? They are acting against the interests of particular citizens and that isn't allowable. And then, you know, press conference this morning, and Prakash Shamada is apologizing. Hear what he's apologizing for? What? Hear what he's apologizing for? What? For clause 34. What? Because to add insult to the injury, yeah. it is not only that the government betrayed parliament's trust. Yeah. Now that they were caught and they are exposed to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, their way out is to say 
blame all of we in the parliament, we can live with that. We can take that. Well, I am not taking that. It was not what was passed in the parliament. Whatever you think of the content of Clause 34, that was not the problem. The problem we are facing is the cabinet proclaiming Clause 34 early so that the friends could benefit. And let me explain to you why. When we sought the undertaking that nothing will be proclaimed under three or four years, it is because we understood that if there were matters of the nature which is concerning us now, in three or four years they would have been long gone. No matter in which these friends of the government involved, one has been completed and is awaiting indictment. The other one was nearing completion and was due to come up in the court in a matter of days. And that is why the government went secretly, surreptitiously, and damagingly, in the dead of night, when you were looking at independent celebration, they proclaimed the amnestic laws. And the reason for that was to allow persons who were about to have their preliminary inquiry completed, and the DPP had already indicated publicly that once the two were finished, because they were the same matter tied together, he will indict and try the two as one. And that matter of the action of the cabinet was to prevent them from continuing with the preliminary inquiry, and it has worked brilliantly. Because as soon as the government did what they did, as they were drinking their champagne, the lawyers were dropping documents, and then they went to court, and they said we can't continue with this preliminary inquiry because the government has let us owe under clause 34. So from here on in, we are trying to undo what was done on the 31st of August. Before the 31st of August, this problem didn't exist. And that is why the US government never complained when the law was passed. Every law passed in our parliament is scrutinized by every embassy in this country and reported back home. But there was no problem because the Attorney General gave the US government and our people the assurance that the government would move to take all steps necessary to have a speedy trial of these persons. Nobody was expecting that while you were saying that on one mouth, out of the other mouth, you were talking to your friends and telling them you're almost free. Understand? And against all of this, I heard somebody writing some foolishness in the parliament, in, in the papers, and being repeated to you, the people, that it must have been some conspiracy between the PNM and the UNC to have PNM criminals go and UNC criminals go. Even if that nonsense had any basis, what then about the vote of the independents who voted nine, all nine, for the original bill? Are we to understand that the independence was involved in a conspiracy to the lower PNM people? Just give me a break, I might look stupid, but I'm not stupid. All right, so if I continue to play this whole speech, you all will not get a chance to come in on the conversation. But I want to say this, Trinidad and Tobago, because you know we are the trolls on the live now. We are some trolls on the live. But I want to say this to them. I, I want to play something for them. So to the trolls on the live, right? I just want to play this for you. Because when you think about all that is happening, and you listen to this statement by Ms. Bicessa, which I was advised last night that I need to play it regularly, it, it all comes together, you know. The people to support you. So you want to be leader, you said you want to be whatever it is, prime minister. It don't work so. You have to support your party. You say you support country before party. Well, go to hell. Go to hell. Well, go to hell. Go to Well, go to hell. Put you. So you want to be leader. You said you want to be whatever it is, prime minister. It don't work so. You have to support your party. You say you support country before party. Well, go to hell. Go to hell. Well, go to hell. Go to well, go to hell. That's what, that what the leader of the UNC, the new leader of the UNC, that's what she had to say. 
In other news, Minister in the Office of the Attorney General, Senator Renuka Sagram Singh Suklal, sought to clear the air on the judgment handed down by the Privy Council on the state's case in the Piaco International Airport terminal matter. At a press conference on Wednesday afternoon, the minister revealed that upon learning of the Privy Council's decision on June 27, 2022, to overturn the decision made by the Court of Appeal, she immediately consulted with Attorney Kerwin Garcia to provide a preliminary opinion on the case. My office, ladies and gentlemen, received the said opinion earlier today, and as a part, I respectfully believe, as a part of my obligation to the state and the wider citizenry to be transparent and accountable in all matters involving the state. Quoting from the preliminary opinion, the minister noted that the changes of the accused can be addressed. The first observation I make about the Judicial Committee ruling is that what it quashes is the Piaco 1 committal decision of 7 January 2008. It does not quash the charges themselves against the accused in that inquiry. A discharge or dismissal at the preliminary inquiry is not an acquittal. Senator Sagram Singh Suklal said other opinions have been sought by the government's attorney in London and Miami as relates to the interpretation of the judgment. Right. So, time for you all to come in. I think I give you all a lot to think about today. A lot. Right? So, I think it's time for me now to allow you to come in and tell me what are your thoughts. 342. 0081 What is your thoughts about what you have heard so far? Now, I ain't seeing nobody on the phone line. Well, that means nobody listening out. Or does that mean that you want to hear more of the speech that Dr. Rowley would have made? All right, I have a call on the line. Hello, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon, uh, Pastor Google. Good afternoon. Pastor Google, you know what is the most dangerous part of this whole thing? What's that? Dark airport thing, which I think a lot of people are not looking at. Do you remember, I think the president at the time was Ellis Clark? Was it? No, it was um, um, with the, the section 34. Yes. Who no, was the president? Of the it was, um, what's his name? Um, oh gosh. Uh, oh, the one name right on the tip of my mouth here. It was, um, what's his name? Do you like the party and thing? Yes, well, this is why I asked if it wasn't for Ellis Clark. No, no, no. It was, um, oh gosh. And he used to party and play mass and thing. Oh, oh, oh. Um, Ellis Clark. No. Not, I'll say in Ellis Clark again. It's a party and play mass. Um, Max to the Max, to the yes, Mr. Richards. Right. Max Richards. He did like the party and play mass and so yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you may not agree with me, and I don't want to get the radio station in trouble. No, do say it. Why it is Why it is they go at that hour of the night when the man in high spirits for you to sign that thing? That is the most deceptive and dangerous part of the whole thing. I am not saying he was part of it, you know, don't misunderstand me. I'm saying why did they choose that time to do that? Why didn't they go any man of a clear head if they wanted to do that at all? That is the deceptive part of that whole thing. It's how deceptive some people could be in politics and dangerous. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I want to be a follow man. I follow you, I follow you. Okay, all right. All right I ain't you. saying anybody give him anything to drink. Eh? No, no, no. no, no. All, right, all right, thank you, thank you. Ellie, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, Pastor Google. Good afternoon. But again, boy, that's why they call it Google. That was so deceptive by the then government. And you know, Pastor Google is the hypocrisy of certain people, like your partner from Dom Pinal. You know, this morning, I listened to him. I said, Lord, these people in them really believe that we daughters and foolish in La La Land. You imagine, the next day, these people and them attorneys was in court speaking their freedom 
knowing fully well that the people in the United States of America has already confessed to this tenuous, corruptive crime, transplanting money from Trinidad to the United States of America. That's what I wanted for, you know. And the United States of America was given free visa for them to come and answer the call in the United States of America. But there came Mr. Ram Logan. No, 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 no. They don't have to be executed. There would be speedy trials here in Trinidad and Tobago. Today, Google, these people promising to sue he said, I'm claiming that there was out thirty million dollars. You hear that? Pastor Google, thirty million dollars. This is what he spent. And the hypocrisy of these opposition people. They should cover them out with duct tape. So Pastor Google, thank you very much for allowing us to hear these tapes and them in Putin. The last one by the then opposition leader, Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley. Thank All you right. very much. Thank you. Pastor Google. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, Pastor Google? Hi. I didn't hear the only part of the program, but I came out here, you played that, you played that say by Justin Vaughn, and he said he was, he was responsible for Section 34. Yes. Then, then, but you want that tape before? before? We don't get that. That tape has I, been... never, I, I, I never heard that pillar tape before that he was on. But all the time, it's the second to the four. Is the prime minister something to do it? Is the is the thing? Is the um? But say in general, I that tape you played. I know it. Look, look at come up and said he. But I thought you all said with with the prime minister something to do with the second to the four. Bonnie said he was responsible. I remember doing that. But for, and, and the second thing is this: the case just, again. Just on, just what, what yeah, go ahead, go ahead. What, what, no, what you're saying is that Mr. Volney. I played a clip with Mr. Volney said that he was responsible, yeah. right? But before yeah. that, I played another clip where Mr. Volney said that it, he was not responsible. He was not responsible. I didn't hear that one. But I, I, I heard that I, when I watched that, the Volney said that he was responsible. I, I mean, I heard a, a number of times already. He said, all right, that's a number of times. The, the, the case again, Blah, Blah, Singh, why, 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 did, why did they throw it out? What was the reason? Why did they throw it out? Yeah. Because they said it had political interference. Okay. So, the, the, right, so all these things about um, who played this thing and the, and the puzzle, the, the big ones, that, that one is also the case. All these things are bygone. The, the, what was political interference with the thing? All these things were responsible. It's political interference. So these things about Graham Logan and them, that, the, the people come to me and said that was never the case. It failed because of political interference and the thing. Otherwise, yeah, the case that they the go down The political interference, sir, you, you, you yeah. know what political interference you were talking about? They're talking about John Jeremy and, 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 and Mark Pickle with the, with the case of the land. That is what the people come to said, not, not with Graham Logan and them. Oh. The political parents was a John Jeremy and the, the magistrate, not with Graham Logan. That was that didn't come before the Queen's Council. The reason go back, go back and you will put on your state and you'll see it. Mm. They are nothing to do, they mentioned nothing about my local. They mentioned it was Jen Jeremy and Mark William with some land business and they met Chama. Political interference, it happened so. We not, the case that they going on. Go, go on, go on, get it, read the judgment at the Privy Council and let's see what's happening. But that is the reason. And important political interference, the case that they going on still, we will we, we not be in this situation. I mean, it could chastise them all up a little them. But the people from Sula had nothing to do with that. All right, it had to do with political affairs with the Chief oh. Magistrate and John Jeremy and them oh. with the land business. Okay? Oh. Thanks a lot, brother. Justice was revoked two days ago. MP Herbert Volney has openly shared his side of the story with the public, saying that he tendered his resignation before the public announcement that he had been fired. But on social media site Facebook this morning, a further statement was posted in the name of MP Herbert Volney. It reads... I want to thank the hundreds of people from all walks of life for your support, for me and my family. We are people of faith and we are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. We need now to pray to God for strength for our Prime Minister, who is now overcome by Anand Ram Logan, that she may purge herself of the influence of one who is unelected by the people, but influences her in a way that we the people must fail. Later in the evening, yet another update was posted. It reads, 
To the hundreds of people who have lent their support to my family and me, the truth has been told. Please lend our Prime Minister your heart so that she will have the strength and vision to see what is wrong and deal with it. Pray for her. I am already covered and spared by my dismissal. When CNC3 contacted Mr. Volney today for confirmation that he had personally updated his profile, he refused to comment. We also placed a call to Attorney General Anand Ram Logan, who said that he was unavailable to comment because he was busy with a personal matter. For CNC3 News... So that was for the caller just now. That was for the caller just now. And to confirm that story, Mr. Volney would have retracted his statements because he would have he was going to face a lawsuit. Right? He was going to face a lawsuit by um by Alan Ram Logan. And what happened? What happened? You remember what happened? Okay. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I remember because I, they, they had so much power. You hear what the man said? The man had to retract his statement and give some money to a charity. Ah! Of his son. Thank you. You see the kind of power, you see the kind of power them, 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 them that play? You hear what you tell the man? He disrespecting him and his office. Ah! But you know now them could call and want to tell my attorney general almost anything any prime minister in that. I have no respect for nobody now, I know. But you have a respect for them. And he was the man the person number 40 something thousand. Pastor Google enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you remember. I'm glad you remember. Because like some people tend to make us feel that we could forget. I hope you like this one. <laughs> Yes. Get Former Justice Minister Herbert Volney, during a news conference held at the office of the Attorney General earlier today, admitted that he was responsible for the controversial proclamation of Section 34. Mr. Volney, a former St. Joseph MP, apologized to Attorney General Alan Ram Logan for the defamatory statements he'd made <laughs> against him. C News' Shirley Lewis attended the news conference and brought back this report. Hello, good afternoon. <laughs> <coughs> oh Lord. Yes. Um, I only hear you talking about Volney and this one and that one. But the real reason the case the could be counsel and judgment is it's sent around my journey. You need to talking about more that? Uh, look, I know what you're talking about that I take full responsibility for Section 34. I was the line minister at the Ministry of Justice. And uh, having come from a background in the criminal justice system as a judge and as a former prosecutor, I was the one who, who not only uh, helped to calibrate section 34 and to bring it about but also to to have it amended in the senate two years after the controversial proclamation of section 34 of the administration of justice indictable proceedings act 2012 an apology has come from the former justice minister herbert volney weeks after its proclamation on august 31st 2012 section 34 was repealed by the government after public concern was raised that businessmen ishwar galbaran singh and steve ferguson stood to benefit the two men had been facing corruption charges relating to the construction of the piaco international airport amounting to hundreds of billions of dollars it was felt the proclamation of section 34 would have paved the way for the charges to be dropped on the basis that the matter was over 10 years old However, Mr. Volney, a retired judge, said today he accepts full responsibility for the proclamation of Section 34. He added that his accusations against Ajiram Logan was reckless, but he was hurting because of the manner in which he was fired as a government minister. The Attorney General had nothing, I repeat, nothing to do with Section 34 other than as a parliamentary colleague 
to assist me on the floor during the committee stage of the Senate in particular. Adrian Logan said he was pleased that they were able to settle the matter and that Mr. Volney can publicly retract the defamatory statements made against him. At the time, Mr. Volney had said he was being made the fall guy and claimed his dismissal was being engineered by Mr. M. Logan in order to take the heat off the public call for the AG to be fired. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon again. But how that is possible, Pastor Google, <laughs> when you told me that oh, you resigned oh, before you were fired? If you resigned before you were fired... They take us possible? for fools. They take us for fools. Pastor Google, I'm gone. You hear what the woman say or what? You want to be leader, you had said you want to be whatever it is, Prime Minister. It don't work so. You have to support your party. You say you support country before party. Well, go to hell. Go to hell. Well, go to hell. Go to Well, go to hell. Yes. Good afternoon, Pastor Hi, good afternoon. That is for sure. Yes. Anytime they hire black people, it's to do the dirty work. And when they don't just squash them, think about it. I get a phone call from Panda recently telling me that the UNC in jeopardy. All right, so I'm out of here, Trin and Tobago. You know my time has gone, but I hope that what I would have played for you would have brought back to your remembrance why. Why you should not allow people to come now to present themselves as though they are saints. Right? They are not. No way doing. No way doing, Trinidad and Tobago. No way doing. I'm out of here. Have a blessed afternoon.